Well, we're all ready to go over here. So uh, welcome everybody uh, on the World Wide Web. Uh, this is uh, the West Coast Jazz Hour, episode 41. And uh, today we have a very, very special guest. We're so glad uh, that she is with, uh, with us today. Uh, we tried to do it uh, last year, but there were some insane technical snafus that happened last year. Uh, so, but we're doing it today, and uh, me and my co-host Josh Nelson are so glad that we have her uh, today. So uh, we have the wonderful vocalist Pinky Winners with us today. Welcome, Pinky. Thanks for joining us. So happy to be here. Yeah, and uh, for everybody who's already watching, um, don't forget, uh, Josh and I have a live performance on Thursday. Uh, we've brought together a all-star big band uh, uh, that we're going to uh, perform with on uh, Thursday at Vibrados. Uh, a full West Coast jazz lineup with A-listers and music from the great Henry Mancini, Johnny Mandel, Bob Florence, people that we're going to talk about actually I with Pinky. I could wear my Yo Sip hat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Sip yeah. will be there. Sip is playing with us. Oh, yeah. Have my Yo Sip hat. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure that Cat and Sip, if they're watching, they're they're super happy yeah. about that. Yeah. So uh, uh, vibrato is on Thursday at uh, at six thirty with uh, the West Coast Jazz Hour Big Band. But let's get started with the interview. Uh, so Pinky, thanks again for for being here with us. We're so uh, glad that you're uh, with us uh, uh, over here on the the, the internet. And um, the first uh, question that I usually ask uh, our guests is, um, how did you exactly get into the, the West Coast jazz scene back in the day? Because I'm, I'm not sure, are you from the LA area? Were you born here? No? I, I can tell you how it happened. <laughs> Please, yeah. Hey, so uh, I, I was born in Michigan City, Indiana. Ah. And, uh, at some point after I'd graduated from high school, I think I was playing piano, piano, terrible sounding piano, with various bands around because it was something to do and made made me some uh, some cash. Yeah. And, uh, so then um, I think I sang a duet with with a guy who was from the union, and then I discovered well I'll just sing. So I started singing, and when I had uh, I had completed. Uh, a really big gig at our local uh, hotel all by myself. I, I was singing a lot like Sarah Vaughn then. Mm. Uh, and I was playing a lot like someone terrible then. <laughs> 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 so so I, um, I, I played for a whole month at the nightclub downstairs at the Spalding Hotel. And I thought, well, you know, what's left? This is the only place to work. So I said to my girlfriend, let's go so let's move. And so we decided to move and we neither one of us had been anywhere major. I'd been to New Orleans and she'd been to Denver. So we picked Denver. So we moved to Denver and here's how it all started. <laughs> we went to the um, state capitol where we had found an apartment about a block away. We walked over there and we met some boys. And um, let's see, how old was I? I think I was 24. Okay, so uh, we met these boys and they said, do you wanna go hear some music? And we said, okay. So uh, we followed them in, in my car, my Nash Rambler convertible, and, <laughs> uh, which I still owed money on. And so <laughs> we went in, in my car to this joint and uh, my girlfriend went up to uh, the band leader, the drummer, and she said, can my girlfriend sing? Uh, and he said, well, what's her name? And she said, Phyllis Wozniak. And he said, what? <laughs> and, and then she remembered a name I had picked out, uh, Pinky Winters. Oh, okay. So I went up and sang and the piano player turned out to be uh, Dick Grove. Oh. Who, who uh, became my lifelong friend wow. and co-worker. I became the singing jazz queen of Denver. And <laughs> I was everywhere in the Denver area. I even worked on piano in Rollins, Wyoming, oh. where I made silver dollars for tips singing Ragtime Cowboy Show. <laughs> <laughs> so, whoops, that was a lot of fun. 
No worries. Somebody must have answered that. Okay, so <laughs> somebody must have answered that. <laughs> Winter's residence. Well, yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> there was Although no I must be going. Yeah. <laughs> they must be watching the show. Um, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, so I I worked around Denver for about a year and a half at every place. I worked with Dick Grove every place. And um, uh, so then I was going with my first husband, who I wasn't married to, Jim Wolf, a bass player. Yeah. And he um, came out to California, and I was to follow, and Dick Grove was to follow. And uh, so we all eventually made our way out here. And uh, what was the question? How, how did you, uh, well, when you got out here, how did you start uh, gigging out here oh, in LA? Oh, well, uh, just started getting gigs and working places, and oh gosh, I mean, um, was that was that because of Dick, like that you worked at, at different places with Dick Grove? Um, no, I don't remember who I worked. Oh, I worked with a, a, a piano teacher lady, a very talented Helene Mirish. And Helene and uh, we had a gig, um, a really good gig that was, uh, you know, ongoing. And so I worked at this club with her, with her and, um, you know, a trio and a tenor player or whatever. Uh, but one of the cute things that happened was I got a gig from going to a, a club in Santa Monica and somehow I got asked up to sing and the person that asked me up was Anita O'Day. Ooh, um, and, hello. Well, I, I didn't know her from nowhere and so I, I don't remember. I, I went there with my girlfriend and she had me up to sing and before I knew it she had given me her gig for two weeks. Wow. And, she was going out of town so i had to learn i had a okay i was work the piano player was hampton hawes oh wow. my goodness you're name dropping <laughs> <laughs> it was a sweetheart the bass player was red mitchell oh my, keep on going <laughs> holy cow couldn't get anybody yeah right. and, um, i don't i'm sorry the, the drummer's name was something <laughs> um, anyway, that sounds I, about right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had a day job, and I had to, um, I had to um, work my day job and go work every night. So I would do that. And uh, Hampton Hawes had not played for singers. He really wasn't known for doing that. Mm. So when I um, encountered them each evening, we'd go back in the back room. And he'd learn all my tunes for the evening. Wow. And we just got along great and it was fun. And Red was wonderful. I mean, I can't tell you what a thrill it was for, you know, me from Pinky Winters, from Silla Swozniak, from Michigan <laughs> City, Indiana, yeah. you know, to have these people, yeah. my musicians, to work with. So that was one of my first gigs. And uh, was that the answer to the question? <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, why why don't we play some music? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Great. Let's yeah. get into a little music now that we're kind of getting into how you came into Los Angeles and towards the West yeah. Coast scene. So uh, the fir the first track that uh, that we wanted to play is uh, "Gone with the Wind" from Lonely One. Okay, that was with uh, Gerald Wiggins on yeah. piano, and uh, I was asked um, to. Uh, to do a record and uh, the the person that interviewed me for it was I think it was Irving Goodman I think it was Benny Goodman's brother oh and so you know it was a big deal and uh, so we said well who would you like and I had been out jamming with some guys and uh, and one of them was Gerald Wiggins the drummer was Chico Hamilton yeah I mean, so I just hired everybody that I had met <laughs> on the hill, you know, singing away. Yeah. That's, and, and I chose Howard Roberts because I thought he was excellent. Yeah. So that's, that's how this came, came to pass. Great band. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Uh, yeah. And Gerald, Gerald Wiggins was heaven. He was just wonderful. Yes. And, uh, 
you know, sometimes singers will have a breakdown on on the set, and I did, and he comforted me. I'll never forget. Uh, he, was just, he was just so caring, and he said, it doesn't matter, blah, 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 everything will be fine. So anyway, that's what happened with, with Very Frank cool. Yeah. 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 Very nice. So, so. Well, this is from The Lonely One, or Lonely One, 1956 yeah. is the year, and our very special guest today is Pinky Winters. And here she is singing the old classic, Gone with the Wind. Enjoy, everybody. Gone with the wind Just like a leaf that is blown astray Gone with the wind My lover has flown away Yesterday's kisses are still on my lips I found a lifetime of heaven at my fingertips Now all is gone Gone is the rapture that filled my heart Gone with the wind The gladness that stilled my heart Just like a flame that burned brightly then became an empty smoke dream that is gone with the wind Yesterday's kisses are still on my lips I found a lifetime of heaven at my fingertips Now all is gone Gone is the rapture that filled my heart Gone with the wind The gladness, the gladness that stilled my heart Just like a flame that burned brightly then became an empty smoke dream that is gone with the wind. Wow. Woo. So hip. Yeah. Boy, we had our eyes on the prize. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure, yeah. Josh? That second chorus, Pinky, I'm just curious. I mean, this is you know, a long time ago, but what is your take on on second choruses or choruses out, you know, after the piano solo? You sing, I love this, wanted to start with this track because I just love your melodic choices on the way out. You know, like we've heard the original melody. Now it's like your version, it's just a little different. You know, is that something that you were practicing or something you learned from some of your idols or how anything you can share with our listeners about like what what happens in a vocalist brain when you come, when you want to change something or, or affect something in a different way like you just did so beautifully? Um, I think I learned from singers that I mm. that I liked. I was very fond at at the time of Sarah Vaughn. Right. And uh, but I don't sound like Sarah Vaughn, I don't think. Yeah. And uh, and she she was m my main person. Kind yeah. Of. Uh, I think the first record I ever heard her sing was a recording of Lover Man. Mm hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. And I think 
she was playing with could it have been Charlie Parker? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm not sure. I don't know. But yeah. it was after some gig and mm. we went to the these older boys I was playing piano with uh, <laughs> uh, had, you know, records and stuff and we listened to it we were just blown away. And that's how I how I got acquainted with my sort of the person that I modeled myself after in the beginning but ever after then um i was just me mm. but still she was an influence absolutely and sarah yeah sarah vaughn is somebody that i've referenced when i work with vocalists as far as like just wonderful phrasing and and actually some of her choices um yeah. are just so great especially on out choruses you know um i would go, I would go hear her i would yeah i i, I worked in an office uh, for the South Chicago South Shore and South Bend Railroad when I was in Michigan City. And so you got a free pass on the train, so you'd go to Chicago anytime you wanted to. Oh. So I would go to the Blue Note all the time, and I'd go here, you know, Sam Kenton and Sarah and anybody that you wanted <laughs> to. First time I heard Jackie and Roy, I heard them. Oh, oh cool. I really loved, loved hearing what they did with stuff. And, uh, so I would either go by myself, you know, little little girl from from Indiana, going <laughs> to the big city, and, and I, I really got to hear a lot of wonderful music. I loved hearing. Um, I was very impressed with George Shearing too. Oh yes. At the time, and uh, I loved his concept of, uh, you know, blowing a chorus. <laughs> He, he had his own way of doing things. Yeah, he sure did. Later in life, yeah. And uh, um, so that was sort of my beginnings. Uh, yeah. Learning, uh, learning how to sing, uh, but only from, from hearing other people sing. Right. And uh, it's not a waste. It's really someplace, it's like going to, going to the university. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's a perfect yeah. way to put it. Yeah. yeah. I like that. I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hear the we hear the influences, and and the guests, our our audience will hear it too. But it, you always sound like you, and that's what I love about this music. But it's a testament to your artistry, you know. Is that you can? I just love when I can hear the influences in artists, and but it's still uniquely you. So yeah, yeah. I, I've changed through the years. Uh, mm. I used to take more chances and you know be be more hip and 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 that kind of thing mm. and uh as life goes on you get a different view of of music and of life mm. and of songs and what they mean mm. so uh yeah I, i'm i'm not ashamed of having changed through the years it's can't do anything about it <laughs> <laughs> and you shouldn't be also no, <laughs> no. yeah i'm really really enjoying uh, I haven't worked uh, since the pandemic. I've worked, I've been self-isolating all this time, all this time. The last gig I worked was with really wonderful player, Christian Jacob. Oh yes, uh, fantastic. Never worked with him before. Um, and uh, I, w I had a gig and it was, uh, what the heck was it? Oh, it was a really good gig. It was in San Diego. And it was, uh, I just wanted to, to uh, sing with one person, with a, with a piano player. Yeah. Which, I, which I've done a lot with Jim Cox, who's very good at that. Oh, yes. And um, we, we can read each other's minds, and he, he's, he's a champ at that. Um, so uh, uh, I, I got Christian to work with me. And I, after one rehearsal, we did, you know, two and a half hour gig or something. And it was... Uh, scary but fun <laughs> <laughs> and, and i'm really happy that uh you know i've been able to have some fine players who have yeah. influenced me garvin was wonderful tom oh, garvin tom garvin loved working with lou levy oh and uh like that so let's yeah. continue <laughs> yeah well maybe we should check in with some of these comments i'm seeing coming in here from our viewers we have uh, my mom's here. Hi, mom. My mom <laughs> says, "Pinky, you rock. Beautiful voice." Oh. <laughs> and then wonderful drummer Jason Harnell's here. Yo, Jason, what's up, man? 
Bobby Blair Thompson says, what a great tune and wonderful interpretation. Thanks, Bobby. Mark Miller's here, wonderful singer as well, gorgeous. Oh David Silverman is here, pianist. He says, please ask Pinky if she remembers meeting Jerry Southern at the Smokehouse in 1991. I do, I remember what I was drinking. <laughs> really? <laughs> do tell. Yeah, well, I was actually with my friend, Richard Rodney Bennett. Oh, I love Richard Rodney Bennett. Well, you'll hear him play on some groovy. Oh my gosh, he's amazing. Uh, yes. Well, we we were friends for over twenty five years. Wow. We did every year in New York, and we did one one record together. Wow. So we'll see. Anyway, uh, what were we talking about? Oh, uh, Jerry. Jerry, meeting Jerry Southern at the Smokehouse. Yeah. God, I've always admired her. I think she's fantastic genius singer but she was uh, she was uh, she was just there to hang out and it was a thrill to meet her and that's all I know hey. <laughs> that's Happy good I got to meet her. yeah she was terrific very good I agree <laughs> and and our our wonderful friend uh, who was an early uh, guest on our show here Terry Gibbs is here watching what? Right. Yeah. Terry's here <laughs> Terry says Tell Pinky to spend at least 10 minutes on telling you how great I am. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll block out some time near the end. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Terry. Yeah. Terry, oh, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, sweetheart. Yeah. Oh, Terry, we had a great interview with Terry. Oh, that oh, was so much fun. Yeah, he's a, he, he he'll, he'll, he'll live forever in my mind. <laughs> And I love reading his uh, his uh, posts on Facebook where he introduces, you know, in like a six paragraph thing, he'll tell who the arranger was, how that came to be. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then over and out. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, uh, I think he's just a uh, sweetheart and a terrific guy. And I'm thrilled that he's wrote me a note. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yes. Terry is the best. <laughs> yeah, he is. Uh, and I love his post too. And then Beverly Hogan's here. Hey, Beverly, love your voice, Pinky, she says. And oh. Carrie Kelsey. Hi, Carrie. She says, I'm crazy about Pinky's voice. Oh, so Carrie. Here. Yeah. <laughs> well, so thank you, guys. We probably, uh, we probably should uh, continue with another you wanna, track. Let's play some more music. Yeah, let's play something. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, what, uh, what, yeah. what would you like? Well, I have, this can be love right here, but, um, okay. Or do you want to do trolley song? Let's do How the about trolley the trolley song? song? Okay. With yeah. Lou. Yeah. With Lou and with Monty Lou, Budwick. Lou Levy and Monty Budwick. Yeah. Anything you want to oh. talk about before we play it? Um, no, go ahead and play it. Then I'll add a little PS. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, here we go. The Trolley Song uh, with Lou Levy on piano and Monty Budwig on the bass. And our special guest, Pinky Winters. <laughs> With my high starch collar and my high top shoes And my hair piled high upon my head I went to lose a jolly hour on the trolley And lost my heart instead With his light brown derby and his bright green tie He was quite the handsomest of men I started to yin so I counted to ten Then I counted to ten again Clang, clang, clang went the trolley Ding, ding, ding went the bell Zing, zing, zing went my heartstrings. From the moment I saw him, I fell. Chug, chug, chug went the motor. Bump, bump, bump went the brake. Thump, thump, thump went my heartstrings. When he smiled, I could feel the car shake. He tipped his hat and took a seat. He said he hoped he hadn't stepped upon my feet. He asked my name. I held my breath. I couldn't speak because he scared me half to death. Buzz, buzz, buzz went the buzzer. Plop, plop, plop went the wheel. 
Stop, stop, stop went my heartstrings As he started to go, then I started to know how it feels When the universe reels tipped his hat and took a seat he said he hoped he hadn't stepped upon my feet he asked my name i held my breath i couldn't speak because he scared me half to death buzz 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 went the buzzer plop plop went the wheel stop 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 went my heart strings as he started to leave i took hold of his sleeve with my hand He stayed on with me and it was grand just to stand with his hand holding mine to the end of the line. Clang, clang, clang. Lou, wow, <laughs> Pinky. Uh, I haven't listened to that for a long time. That was wow. Fun. Yeah, um, I. Uh, you know, you you just mentioned this this gig that you that you got from Anita O'Day uh, because she had to go out of town for for two weeks, and there were so many uh, singers back in those days when. Uh, uh, when you when you came to town when when you were working to town in the late 50s and the 60s yeah. um like anita and and carmen mcrae and you know lucien polk and were you were you at all busy with differentiating yourself from from those from those other uh singers at all or i don't think i thought about that i just did my thing and 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 had had fun doing it I mean, I, I I was lucky to have gigs. Yeah. Even in in funny little places, there were weren't just normal people came. And, yeah. Uh, and and then some some better jazz type places, but I, I just had fun doing the music. It was it was like that for me. Yeah. Um, it's funny um, this tune, uh, the trolley song. <clears throat> um, Quite a while ago, gosh, it was quite a while ago. <laughs> I went with uh, uh, Dick and Barbara Nash to uh, uh, to hear Benny Goodman play mm. in San Diego. So we went in their car and went to rehearsal. And Dick Nash said, "Hey, Benny." Um, <laughs> You ought, to, you ought to hear this girl sing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, somehow I sang, Lou was the piano player, okay? So I had been working with Lou. So I sang a tune or something and Benny said, well, yes, that would be very nice. And the other person on the program was Aaron Copeland. Oh, who was whoa. Rather thrilling. I have pictures. <laughs> uh, wow. And, and so, uh, <clears throat> You know, I had to explain to Aaron who these people were, what that sound was, and this and that. No, no, that's a guitar. It's amplified. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he said, oh, how astounding. <laughs> 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 so at one point on stage, uh, Jack Sheldon, you know, said to uh, Benny, 
Hey, Benny, what about that girl singer? So Benny said, okay, we're going to hear from a lovely young lady I just heard sing. So I came out and I sang the trolley song. And Benny's behind me with his clarinet in his arms, you know, just and humming all the while. It was adorable. Aww. And so Lou and I did the trolley song. So it was a big, big hit. And afterwards, uh, you know, I was the queen of the, queen of the May. <laughs> we, we went down to the to the bar and the piano was playing, clang, clang, clang. <laughs> so that was my my aim to fame. And and the the beautiful thing that came from that is that Benny was so sweet to me. He, we stayed over. He took us to breakfast the next morning. Oh. And I have a picture of me sitting next to Benny while he's signing the check. <laughs> so that that was a that was a, a a a triumphant thing it really was and we had a great time wow so that's my story of the trolley song yeah that's very that's cool great. and that intersection of the artistry of you with benny goodman and aaron copeland on the same bill right oh, that uh, i have the poster Oh my gosh! It's just like my brain's gonna explode yeah. from all from all that greatness in one yeah. like building. Yeah. <laughs> With much affection, Benny. Yeah. <laughs> and you know I haven't seen him since, but that was great. Yeah. <laughs> Not a lot of people can say that that uh, Benny Goodman picked the check up for. Yeah. You know. I got the picture. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You got the proof. I mean, Dick Nash was in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and, and did did you did, while you were doing all of those gigs did you did you run into like fellow vocalists who would you know came around who were some of the people uh like your 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 peers basically who you would see at um, gigs that you would go, that you were gonna check out or people that would uh, come out um, to your gigs um let me think a blank i'll have to think that over um one, on the way back from the benny goodman thing we stopped at a joint in uh, la jolla or someplace and uh who was this wonderful singer she's no longer with us she hmm. made a wonderful record with dave mckay oh stephanie yeah stephanie, stephanie haynes ah. that's right <laughs> stephanie haynes oh that was so much fun and she was i didn't hear her that night because she had laryngitis so oh. they made us sing so i sang with uh whoever there was there <laughs> yeah you know it was just we we're just having a good time wow But, uh, she's wonderful she was something else i got to play with her one time pinky oh, and it was not long before she passed away yeah she, it was uh, yeah she she did a a, a a cd called two on a swing i love that record one of my two favorites the other one is uh al Cohn and jimmy rolls Ooh. oh yes wow those are my two favorites stephanie gave me a copy of two in a swing she was in this house she was sitting right over there and after i put on that record i said i'm changed forever this yeah. album is so special and you can hear there they were like this dave yeah. mckay and her were so tight <laughs> yeah, Perfect. we're gonna do a Stephanie Haynes and Dave McKay tribute in a few weeks on this show. Oh, yeah. Great, great. I'll and we're gonna have David on, who played with her, David Silverman, and we're gonna have oh, yeah. Lori Bell is gonna join us, yeah. who played Lori with Dave Bell. McKay quite a bit. Lori. You know Lori, the flutist. Yeah. Is San she, Diego. She's married to Mike Wofford. No, that's Holly Hoffman, <laughs> the other San Diego flutist. Yeah. <laughs> okay, wrong. <laughs> so I hope you'll join us for that because Stephanie, uh, in my opinion, is one of the unsung uh, singers of the of the scene, and I just I feel so lucky to have had that one moment with her. That's, that she's she was she was you know I I have those two records there I know where those two are. And Jennifer, my daughter, Jennifer, my daughter was <laughs> Stephanie. Oh, <laughs> wasn't Stephanie. Um, anyway, 
Wow, you got fans. <laughs> yeah, oh, there must be there must be a gig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mention your name, and uh, and and we'll do that gig. Anyway, uh, Stephanie and uh, and Dave, that's a, such a wonderful uh, choice of songs, and uh, it runs the gamut. You know, it's it's really terrific. So she's she she was my fave. Yeah. Yeah, I can see why. Yeah, very special lady. Yeah, and I, I can in my head I hear when I hear her name, I hear Chuck Niles from KLON. Oh yeah. Always talking about her on the radio because I went to Long Beach State when uh -huh. the station was there in the mid '90s. Chuck was still around, and I would go to the station so I could meet meet my heroes. Right, so I met Dave Brubeck, I met Horace Silver, I met you know they were going in for interviews. And, and Chuck would read, on Friday, he would read yeah. uh, the listing, the gig listing, and he would always say, Stephanie Haynes with Dave Mackay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and that is burned into my brain, the way he said, said their names, yeah, oh, back God. in the day. I miss Chuck so much. Me too. I feel lucky that I got to meet him. Yeah. What, yeah. A, what a sweet man. You would have loved yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I hear only great stuff about, yeah. about Chuck. A lot of knowledge and uh, good taste. Yeah. Totally. There's a there's a guest on uh, on our feed, uh, Tony oh, yeah. Tony Guerrero, and he actually has a very interesting question. Uh, uh, if you ever knew or have a connection with Beverly Kenny? No, I didn't know her. I don't have a connection, and she's gone, right? Yeah. She doesn't any longer. Yeah. Uh, and and I think she was quite quite wonderful. She, yeah, I really like her singing. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, Bill Reed um, produced my Shadow of You Smile um, CD, and uh, yeah, he, he, I think, was familiar with her, uh -huh. but I didn't know her. Okay. Well, speaking of that, maybe we should play, actually, that shadow of your smile okay. and you and you wanted to you wanted to say something uh, because that's uh, a record that uh, that you're only singing the music okay. of Johnny Mandel and you were good friends with Johnny right uh, I was fortunate enough to know him quite a long time through my life and uh, and I don't think I knew him I didn't know him then when I when I did this concert in Washington DC but um, I knew him for many years and we were very good friends. Anyway, let me write what he wrote. I called him one night and I said, I need need you to write. We're going to release this concert we did of, of your music and uh, I'd like to have something you say on it. So I had a fax machine at the time <laughs> and he said, he sent me this. You are going to love this CD. It is a concert of Pinky Winners and Lou Levy at their absolute best. My songs tend to vary greatly from one another. Many moods, tempos, and emotions. Pinky and Lou do them all superbly. I'm proud to say that many fine singers have recorded my songs, but none of them made me as happy as what you're about to hear on this record. And so he faxed that to me and I fainted and got up. <laughs> <laughs> And he called me back and he said, how, well, how was it? Was that okay? And I said, yeah, great. He said, did you want me to sign it? And I said, okay. So he, he wrote his name and faxed it to me. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, that, was a, that was a big thrill. And this concert was a big thrill. It was done at the Corcoran, Corcoran Gallery. And um, let's go. Yeah, shadow of your smile. Shadow of your smile. Here we go. <laughs>
the echo of a piper's song, the shadow of a smile. shadow of your smile when you are gone will color all my dreams and like the dawn to my eyes my love and see all the lovely things you are to me Kissed your lips And so did I Now when I remember spring All the joys that love
You sound just so lovely on that and the connection with with Lou and the arrangement I love this arrangement it when it goes into three you know it's it's so hip you know I think it was five four maybe oh it was. I maybe I counted, it, I counted it as a big three big three yeah. our drummer our drummer says big three <laughs> but you are the one who performed it so maybe you know better <laughs> well that was really a, a treasure to to be able to present it to this room full of people who had never heard me before. It was my yes. my debut. So who's on bass? Bill Takis. Bill he, Takis. He worked with Bob Duro. Oh. Almost all the time. Nice. Terrific, and he uh, not familiar. I think he was playing electric bass, but mm -hmm. you know, it's fine. Fine. Oh, very tasteful player. I th I thought it was fit in so nicely with Lou and yourself. Yeah, yeah. he was a uh, he was uh, cautious about intruding on on any of Lou's dynamics. It was it was a really wonderful time. Yeah, yeah. He was so subtle. Almost in the beginning, you I felt like I I was like, is there a bass player? Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> it was so quiet, and then later you're like, oh, okay, there he is. <laughs> yeah. Just as they should be. <laughs> <laughs> Bada bing. Yeah. <laughs> so that was uh, that was it. The shadow, and uh, and I have Johnny's signed thing that says it was good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was. So did you also work with uh, with Johnny from from time to time for like a, a gig or a project or? Um, actually, not that much. But I remember one time. He asked me to sing at this big um, event. I think it was honoring the Bergmans, perhaps. Mm. What the heck did we do? Oh, uh, we did Cinnamon and Clove, which was fun. Yeah. And uh, and he played for me, mm. and, that, and that was cute. And and uh, I was terribly nervous. And uh, I think my my partner in my seat was Dorothy Lamour. Oh. <laughs> And uh, and she didn't sing. She didn't get to sing. But uh, anyway, I heard I heard Richard, you know, and he, and he stumbled, and he and I think he said, "Oh no!" And and I thought, "Ah, it's going to be fine." <laughs> we we did the thing. It was it turned out great. Yeah. Uh, Mark Miller had a question. He said, "Can you talk a little bit about Bill Reed getting your music released in Japan?" Oh. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, my dear friend Yasuo Sangu had a label called SSJ, Sinatra Society of Japan. Big, big fans of Frank Sinatra in Japan. And um, how the heck did I get there? Oh, I think Mr. Sangu hired me to come and work five or six cities, different clubs and stuff. Treated, treated me wonderfully, paid me well. Uh, I worked with Japanese musicians, wonderful musicians. Um, one of my favorite ones, what the heck is his name? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> he was so good. They are wonderful. I've had a, a, oh, man. Had a couple opportunities to play with some Japanese folks and they're just fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's this guy. Um, there he is. <laughs> 
I call him Sweetie Pie, but his <laughs> real name is Kiyoshi Morita, hmm. and he still is playing beautifully. I saw him the last time I was there, which was quite maybe four or five years ago, but uh, Mr. Sangu no longer has SSJ Records. He is ill and not producing them anymore, but I made about four or five uh, recordings that uh, that he released, and um, one of them I don't I don't think you have anything from is the one with Jim Cox and we do it's called Winters in Summer oh. and it's all um, bossa nova and uh, you can hear me being quite fluent <laughs> in 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 the language <laughs> I'm very good at that <laughs> so anyway, that that was fun and, and uh, Oh, we we do a record either over here or over there, and uh, four or five that he re he released, uh, and I miss him so much, and I feel sad that that our uh, union can can't uh, continue right. because he he really was a fan of good music, of Sinatra, and and of me, and I really loved going there mm. so. nice well thank you for that appreciate yeah. that yeah. yeah just a few other shares here people chiming in dick nash is here with melinda dick nash <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're watching hey good to have you guys here and hey. my friend jeffrey gimbel very nice vocalist as well he says such a, st a stunning smile <laughs> <laughs> shadow of your smile he enjoyed it oh i get it <laughs> yeah and mark isbell's here hey mark shadow of your smile wow pinky lovely what a team you and lou levy were i agree yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely and julie kelly hey julie julie and sam are here wow. hey she we are gonna play yeah she's asking for us to play something from the metropole orchestra record with lou oh okay yeah, yeah. shall okay. we do you want to do something from that we or can, we can totally do that is that okay pinky can we sure. share Ready? something okay let's see what did i pull up here okay um what yeah we were going to close with something from there. Right. Yeah, so but we, we do sure thing. Sure thing. Yeah. Perfect. Let's do okay. that. For uh, for everybody who's not familiar with the Metropole Orchestra, it's actually an orchestra from the Netherlands, and uh, it's uh, it's known for being the uh, one of the greatest jazz and pop orchestras in the world. And uh, uh, it's it, it's Pinky. It's super nice that there's also a connection between you and the, 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 the orchestra from my home country, because I've been listening to this orchestra for, for many, many years. And um, my first live jazz gig that I saw when I was 13 years old was actually the Metropole Orchestra with uh, John Schofield, the great uh, jazz guitar player. Um, so I was super surprised when, uh, uh, when, when you mentioned this recording, because I didn't know of this recording. Um, so uh, it's it's super cool that there's a connection uh, there between the orchestra and between you and you you wanted to say something also about either the recording session or about Hilversum or I just wanted to mention that this arrangement is by Rob Prong. Oh yeah, who was uh, he, he did four of the five that I did on that uh, CD, and he's just the best to work with and was the best to work with and I miss him sorely. As yeah, well. so. Let's hear it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Here we go. Sure thing featuring Pinky Winters. <laughs> I'm only a 
Gorgeous. Nice little band. So, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. You sing that so beautifully. That's Jerome Kern, right? Yes. Oh. The, from uh, from what year was this, Pinky? When did you record this? Beats me. Uh, let's see. We've been trying to find some info on yeah. it online, and it's it's very difficult to find anything about this record. Yeah, because it's out of print. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few. Um, hmm. What was the question? <laughs> when when did you record this? Um, I don't know. Or can you find out like when it was published? They're not telling me on here. <laughs> <laughs> And it's okay. I'm so sorry. That we just got to listen to that with you and like live. It was so special, yeah. I have to tell you. Yeah. Um, that was just really gorgeous. It sent shivers up my spine, not only the way you sang it and your phrasing and your, your choices, but the arrangement, Rob's arrangement is just yeah, something cool, else. Huh? Yeah. He, he really knew what to do. I think Lou sent him prior to our <clears throat> going there, a, a little cassette of Lou playing sort of a, his idea of what an arrangement might be that Lou and I would do. And wow. he just, he, you know, we, we rehearsed it once and recorded it. I mean, it was so easy to, yeah. follow, to follow Rob as he was conducting and, uh, and to just hear what was going to happen next. And those players... I mean, Lordy, 
<laughs> Wonderful. Um, wow. I don't know if we have time for, uh, do we have time for one or two things? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Well, we're just loving this. And there's all these comments flying by. Yeah. Cecily Gardner. Hey, Cecily. She says, one of her songs, Pinky, sound amazing. Oh, hey, Dakota Horvath, singer from from uh, Chicago, right? Nice changes on the ending. Oh, you were talking about the last tune. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're seeing, thanks for watching, everybody. We're just, we're loving our time with Pinky right now, and thanks for watching. If anyone has any questions for her, uh, we're going to play a couple a uh, couple more tunes, but please ask a question. Well, I, I actually Maybe have a question Canada for you, does, Pinky. Yeah. Um, ju just now, like on that ballad, it was like I'm, I'm no singer at all, but I mean it was a a, a masterclass in in timing and and phrasing how you just how you how you just sang and I haven't heard a lot of singers who are so direct with uh, with the with the intent you know because there you, you I I heard I heard a little bit more Sarah Vaughn in your voice on this on this recording actually um so wh what like it almost sounds like that you were from the from the a couple previous recordings that we that we heard from uh, for example gone with the wind that you kind of like simplified your your way of singing that it yeah. it, it, it was so direct and and you and you have like very very um very uh, light vibrato at the end also like you're not doing that much vibrato so it's like super you know it's super direct you know super like intentful and i like i, I don't know if there's a question in there but, <laughs> but Here, here's the answer it's fun to sing uh, <laughs> and when you get a tune that that you really like or or love no problem you know it's it's just it's there it's there for you so all these tunes that you recorded with the metropole was that your choice to record those tunes or did you uh oh, kind of my, work that out with lou uh my my choice yeah ah. um, he chose five for himself uh he likes likes to do the hymn yeah so, okay and uh, uh that was one of his tunes and the and i did uh, uh um, I wish I knew. Flying down to Rio, dreamer, sure thing, and all through the night. And you know they were all um, superb arrangements. And I can't believe how easy it was to sing them. I guess maybe being next to Rob on the stand uh, while he was conducting, I just took it from him. <laughs> right. Yeah. We rehearsed, you know, as I said, we rehearsed each tune once. Yeah. And room full of players. All these wonderful players. Oh, and I have to mention the Indonesian food. <laughs> we went out every night with Rob for Indonesian food, different places deep in the forest. <laughs> we'd, we'd order stuff that, you know, what did we know? We we did we we ate what what rob ate yeah i'm sure we gained about 50 pounds a piece but it, <laughs> it was fabulous i mean what fun i mean eating singing everything it was yeah amazing. and being with rob was was just just the greatest and at the end uh, lou uh, they didn't bring rob's uh, laundry bag and rob was angry and he said you know um well what am i going to do and uh, Lou said, don't worry, don't worry. I'll give you something clean to wear. So at the last day, Lou gave him a, a, a t-shirt, you know, and uh, and Rob said, thank you for the polio shirt. <laughs> 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 that was that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, before we go, I wanted to make sure you got to hear um, um, where is this? Flying down to Rio. Oh no! I oh. would like you to play yeah. this tune that Richard Drivey Bennett played for me, and it's called "I Only Want Some," and it's by Lieber and Stoller. 
Oh yes. Hound dog, okay. And I was I was pleased to give a copy of this to to Mike Stoller when I saw him and Corky Hale at a thing at uh, oh, yeah. one of, one of um, Ken's affairs. And uh, and he wrote me back a kind of a fan letter and now I can't find it. So oh. <laughs> anyway, I pleased him and he, he said he and Corky enjoyed the whole darn thing. So, <laughs> nice. I only want some by Lieber and Stoller. It's our it's our modern tune. Yes, <laughs> and this is with Rod, Richard Rodney Bennett playing piano. That's correct, yeah. Who I got to know through some film scores that he did, of course. And then he was a fantastic pianist and singer who uh, played with a, maybe a vocalist you you know about Claire Martin. Yes, I do know about. Claire. Yeah, I I worked with. He worked with Claire, the same time he worked. I worked with him in New York at, once a year. Wow. Or stay at his place. Oh. We'd rehearse some tunes, blah blah blah, and then we'd either work two nights or three nights at some place, and j just you know that was my other my other coast. Uh, wow. Like, but we, he was wonderful to work with. Yeah. So talented and such a great cook. <laughs> uh, just the best. I mean, yeah. From what Claire was telling me and what you're telling me, he just sounded like a, a Renaissance man of sorts. Oh, just this amazing person. I And I, I want to be him when I grow up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so if, you'll, if you'll do my, my, uh, my, my rock. Uh, thing I only want some yes yeah, we're ready to go this is uh, uh, Libra and Stoller I only want some okay featuring our wonderful guest Pinky Winters <laughs> of it I just want the taste and the touch of it I don't want all your love I only want some I don't want all your time I only want some I don't want all your time I only want some I just want a moment starting from Right now, baby, till kingdom come I don't want all your time I only want some I don't want your kisses to Make my temperature mount So save the goodnight ones And all the polite ones I just want the ones that count I don't want all your love I only want some I don't want all your love, I only want some I don't want every part of you I just want the soul and the heart of you I don't want all your love, I only want some to make my temperature mount save the good night ones all the polite ones i just want the ones that count i don't want all your love i only want some i don't want all your love i only want some i don't want every part of you just want the soul in the heart of you I don't want all your love I only want some I don't want all your love I only want some
That's a great little tune. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Pinky, I have a question. You sound so good. What Kevin was maybe going to ask something like this earlier, but we didn't get around to it. You, you, your time is so good. Mm. How do you reconcile with that? Where do you, where do you, <laughs> do you have influences in the, in the time, in the rhythm department? Where did you learn that? Did you, is that something you just learned on the gig, as they say, in the university of the bandstand? Or is there some way you could share your sense of time or how, how it came to you like that? It's so natural. I guess it's just from listening all, all through the years. Yeah. Time I thought it would be fun to sing instead of play piano. I was a classical student for many, many years. Mm. And I asked my teacher, I said one day, um, I'd like to sing. Now, can, uh, can you help me with that? Because I, I knew she, I think she coached singers. She said, okay, so she, she played San Antonio Rose for me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that was my first sort of tune. Oh. I learned but but that has nothing to do with what you asked <laughs> yeah <laughs> although I could probably reproduce that in a jazz vein at some point right wow so just listening and that's that's what it, in my in teaching and maybe it's the same for you Kevin I mean phrasing the things that have come up in discussion here with you mm. are some of the hardest things to teach mm. phrasing getting the feel right all those things and I just always come back to just listening mm -hmm. really listening to the records emulating playing along with records getting it getting it inside you know getting these records inside your head basically so it, it comes out in another way uh, I, I worked at the Dick Grove music workshop for all the while I was the third person hired oh Jack was the second and I was the third yeah and so uh, the class I did with uh, with Dick for a long, long, for many, several years was uh, um, I played for a company, piano accompaniment. They learned how to accompany singers. Mm. So I just, you know, I, no, no preparation. I just did what I did. Right. Learned how to accompany. And then I also did a class with Joanne Grauer, a very fine. Oh. Guy. And Joanne and I did a gig uh, called was it um oh it was the jazz vocal improvisation <laughs> and we had uh our students would uh, play depending who was who was in the worst shape that person would carry the class that week. <laughs> so uh, she would play and i would i would sing four bars and then we'd say okay take it take it and they would just learn by doing right and Strangely enough, they ended up sort of learning how to improvise just from doing it. Right. I, you know, I really don't. But but uh, that was a that was a fun period in my life. I ended up t doing the uh, uh, the class with uh, with Lou, uh, where the sing where the pianists uh, played for singers, and he taught them. Mm. And Dick had done it for many years. Then Lou took over for five or six years. And that, that was a lot of fun with him too. And he was really good at explaining um, his views on that, which right. from stuff which I can't impart to you now because it's I, I'll I'll impart it some other time. <laughs> so, wow! Yeah, learn by doing, right? Yeah, yeah, and watching and listening and emulating. Yeah, exactly. And so many. So many people, I actually Dick Grove School of Music has come up quite a bit on the show. Yeah. Um, my one of my important teachers studied there. Uh, I think in the '80s or '90s. Her name was Jan Roper, but she couldn't say enough about Dick Grove and what that did for her career. Yeah. I have to tell you, uh, today I was looking at my iPhone and you know sc scrolling through uh, uh, things on YouTube, and I found something I'd never seen before. It was Dick Grove. Mm -hmm talking about about teaching and about the school and his book and what it consisted of i mean it was so logical i thought why didn't everybody go there <laughs> yeah but really imparted it even to a, a non sort of I, i'm a musician but i you know what i mean i'm not like you guys uh, uh he uh 
he he really explained it so beautifully and easily so that you wondered why everybody didn't go there right so, yeah it's just a plug for the school which is no longer it's no yeah. longer yeah but but that connection you made with him in in denver right yes wow and then he came west i guess to yeah. to los angeles yeah yep started the school and a lot of people yeah the, the name keeps coming up yeah yeah big influence on me because of my meeting him so yeah we might not be here today hmm. yeah. beautiful well i've been kind of bogarting this this interview because i just i have all these questions is there anything you want to you want to ask on um, to pinky or well yeah the, what like the one final thing that i actually was pretty curious about uh pinky was um uh you know like uh, i don't know if you uh, had a big hand in 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 picking the bands that you worked with but you know you made a the, your first record was with, with was with stan levy on drums and chico hamilton was on uh, on lonely one so and and with great bass players as well i picked those people for lonely one right oh you picked them so so why so can you tell me a little bit like how you went about with picking your 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 rhythm section people? Did you also work with Shelly Mann? No. Oh, well, okay. I I, but I never recorded with him. Okay, okay. He worked with me and Lou a couple of times. Right, right. Because him and Lou were good friends too. Uh, what was the question? Uh, how how do how did you pick uh, your rhythm section people? Um. Well, like, why did you uh, why did you uh, pick Chico Hamilton to play on Lonely One, for example? Because because uh, I'd been at a jam session. Ah, yeah, <laughs> old <I> school. <laughs> Jerry and uh, and uh, Chico was there. Uh huh. So I just and then I they asked me to pick whoever I wanted, so I decided that the, those were the guys, and then I liked Howard Roberts playing, so I. Uh, Howard Roberts was great. I was going with the bass players. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. That, that, I, that, it's super simple, but, you yeah. know, effective. Yeah. Speaking of bass players, Pinky. Would, yeah. Uh, someone just asked, did you ever work with Bob Mays, bass player? Yes. I oh, love Bob. I got to play with him once, but you played with him, right? Oh, Lordy. Yes. He was a close friend. Hmm. Really funny guy. Yeah. And, uh, I was friends with his his wife uh, Marie, and uh, yeah. In fact, uh, I worked with Bob Mays at a gig at the museum in uh, LL in Hollywood mm -hmm. um, the night before he passed away. Wow. wow. And. Yeah, we had we had a long, we we worked everywhere together. Mm. Um, yeah, wonderful bass player. Mm. Yeah. Well, so let's see. We got. I mean, we we could do a part two with you, no problem. But yeah. for today's interview, maybe we catch one more tune. Yeah, the, the flying down to Rio with the Metropole. That would be wonderful. Yeah, let's do that. It would be, and let's listen. Yes. Thank you. So, Gus Khan. Gus Khan. Yeah. Okay. Composer. And someone did chime in. I think Margaret, uh, fans of the show, Margaret McKay and Larry. Yeah. Uh, they said they found it online. 1994 was, was the... the year this was recorded. 1994. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's an entry anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Where did I put it? It's up here, isn't it? There it is. Okay. Here we so go. So this is... Uh, Pinky with the Metropole Orchestra from 1994, and it's flying down to Rio, as she says, by Gus Kahn. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get to Rio and we've got to make time You love it, soaring high above it Looking down on Rio from a heaven of blue 
Send the radio to Rio de Janeiro With a big hello just so they'll know And stand by there, we'll fly there Hey Rio, everything will be okay We're singing and winging our way to you Brazilian ladies will catch your eye By the light of a million stars in the evening sky Oh, Rio, Rio by the sea Flying down to Rio where there's rhythm and rhyme Hey, feller, twirl that old propeller Got to get to Rio and we've got to make time You love it, soaring high above it Looking down on Rio from a heaven of blue Send the radio to Rio de Janeiro With a big hello just so they'll know And stand by there, we'll fly there Oh, Rio, everything will be okay We're singing and winging our way to you La, 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 la Oh man! Yeah. Wow, what so a great beautiful. arrangement! Yeah, yeah, indeed. In the booth, we're singing at the end, the la 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 la. Yeah. Uh, Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sick. That was just fantastic. And my friend, vocalist, maybe you know her, Pinky Susan Sinner. You know Susan Sinner. She introduced me to the music of Rebecca Paris and Stephanie Haynes. She's a big Stephanie Haynes fan, too. And, and Susan's a wonderful singer, and she's here, and she says, Dang, what a tone. Love, love, love. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. That's, yeah. Um, yeah, that was fun to do. And everybody was, I think it was the last tune that I did with them. And everybody in the, it, we recorded in a huge, huge, like a, a big, hall a garage enormous place and up there was the booth and everybody was in the booth lou was up in the booth and so they were all singing at the end it was really a very fine a fitting ending wow <laughs> that's amazing yeah mark isabel note he noted incorporating oh yeah i love the ingenious way rob pronk incorporated tristeza at the end of flying down to rio oh, yeah that is very true, Mark. Isn't that a great arrangement? Yeah. Wow, so good. So, is it? This is out of print. This album? Yeah, yeah. It's you can't okay. Get it. Can't find it. Wow, this has been great. Like an exclusive sharing of this record with with this audience here today. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There it is. She's got a copy. Yay. <laughs> Very few. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd like to record again. I don't know where or when, but um, I still I have another one in me. I would love to do something with you. Would that be fun? Maybe Kevin. <laughs> we could we could both play with you. You know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. No one's called yet, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I mean, uh, Pinky, this was so amazing to get to talk to you finally and to listen to these recordings of yours, which are so beautiful and you know to get to talk with you about your experiences and with whom you worked and you worked with so many people and you know it's that's cool. <laughs> oh i'm sure I, I mean that's always the case with the show like we're we're only uh, scratching uh, the surface yeah we're scratching the surface yeah. literally of everybody's career so great to have been able to uh record through the years you know i even have a record of me singing at the lighthouse Ooh. Know, when Bob Cooper would be up there playing, he'd say, and then he'd tell whoever it was on piano. And we, I do a couple of tunes. I have records of that. Oh. Yeah. Wow. wow. Sounds so strange, but it's but it was great, great fun. I yeah, that. yeah, yes, definitely, <laughs> most definitely. Wow. Yeah. Well, well I, I got another one in me, so. Yeah. <laughs> You planted that seed, and uh, okay, duly noted. <laughs> and we, we have some Sandy Whites here, and she says, "We oh. need, yeah, hey Sandy from Australia, right? She says, we need another Pinky record, and would be fabulous with Josh. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> what a great idea. <laughs> thanks, Sandy. Yeah. Oh. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in and watching our show. This has been a really wonderful time with Pinky. Absolutely, yeah. This, the, absolutely. Thank you so much, Pinky, for joining us and sharing all of your musical wisdom and and your experiences. And uh, uh, for everybody, Thursday at Vibrato's the West Coast Jazz Hour, big band. We're going to play all of the great uh, uh, the the music from all of the greats: Bob Florence, uh, uh, Pinky Worth with Bob Florence, with jo uh, Johnny Mandel. Uh, Billy May, um, we have the wonderful vocalist Melissa Morgan singing also with us. She's absolutely fantastic. Um, so we're very much looking forward to play uh, this program for you on uh, Thursday. So please join us. And, and from the bottom of our hearts, Pinky, thank you so much for joining us. I'm 90 years old and I want to record again. And so you should. We would. Everybody says that, you know, you should. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we'll we should make something happen. That's for sure. Lovely to be with you. Thank you so much, you guys. It. I was kind of nervous, but but I'm okay. You're get, you're <laughs> getting so much love from everybody out here. You have no idea. Will I be able to read what they said on Facebook? I think so. Yeah. If yeah. you're going to, if you're going to look, uh, because this is on your Facebook as well, so you can watch through all of the comments. Yeah. Lots of comments. They're still coming in. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we can't keep up. <laughs> yeah. Cease and desist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 No. Thank you, everyone, once again. Thank you, Pinky, and uh, we'll see everybody in September. Yeah. Or Thursday. <laughs> or Thursday, yeah, if you're in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Nothing. I was just going to say bye. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Beautiful singing and lovely just to listen to music with you. Maybe we'll talk. talk. That sounds great. For sure. Thank you so much, you guys. You've been great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We'll see everybody next time. Okay. Okay.